Hey, what's up guys? Eddie Gray here. Welcome to the channel, Resources for the Modern Creative, where we help you become a better producer. And today I want to talk about a problem you don't know you have. No, I am not an armchair psychologist. I have something for you that I believe can help you. I don't think anybody talks about it. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can shoot me a message and let me know this channel talks about it, that channel talks about it. But I want to talk about the problem of the transient. No, I don't mean the homeless problem in Los Angeles or San Francisco. What I'm talking about here are the transients that we find in our music. For example, here's a transient of me saying the word, hey. Here's a transient of a snare drum. Here's a transient of a piano. And here's a transient of a fish. So there are transients everywhere. Transients are found throughout life. And when we record those transients and air is pushed into microphones and samples are pushed into microphone systems, we get transients. So we don't see the transients. For example, in this section here, we're not actually seeing any transients. We're just seeing MIDI events, correct? But if we bounce them to audio, we then have the opportunity to see their transient content. Now, if something is sustained like this sub bass here, you can see it doesn't have that much transient content to begin with. Maybe when the phrase starts out, it has some transient content, but generally speaking, it might just be flat in nature. But again, when we're looking at something like drums, you can see that there is some heavy transients every single time we're hitting the taiko or the snare or the toms. And so the problem that I believe every composer, producer, beat maker, singer, songwriter has is that they write music when they're not really thinking about transients. And so I want to give you a direct example. So you can see I've got this taiko track and I'm going to pull up a transient shaper and I want to you to see the remarkable difference that employing an envelope or a transient shaper can do when working with your music. And I specifically want to point out the staccato pieces of the strings that I'm about to play. The goal for me, the, the purpose here is to listen with clear distinction. I want to hear every single part when it comes to my string chamber here. So let's take a listen. I have this great transient shaper inserted at a value of negative 15 with the smooth algorithm so that I could just notch off without necessarily killing the sound. Well, if I bypass this, look at what a difference it makes. Just having a bit of the transients reintroduced. What ends up happening is that the attention of the listener, in this case, you, goes to everything but the strings. That's where I want people's attention to be drawn. But because there's so much transient content to begin with, it's difficult for the mind to perceive what is the most important if everything is shouting at it. If there's a transient here, there, and everywhere, it's, it's, it's hard to follow. So go ahead and listen with that in context. So no envelope or no transient shaper on the drums. Here we go. Now it's true, a quick fix could just be to lift up the volume of the strings and maybe that will compensate in a way that works, but that also may introduce too much frequency content. And so one fix is to remove not just frequency content, but transient information. Listen again, now with the transient shaper in time. This is one very minor thing you can do to reintroduce the theme in your music. Something else that I love to do 
is I love to go into the region inspector inside of Logic and I'll click on individual audio regions and I'll reduce volume. I mean, you can see here that I'm reducing this by straight up negative 12 decibels. So I'm not afraid of being heavy handed to get the result I want. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about here is at the end, I'm introducing more instruments, more strings, and so because of that, I'm reducing the volume just a little bit more on this Tycho part. So you would think we're getting to the end, it's time to crush it, it's time to you know, go into an epic build. No, I actually wanna do the opposite. I have elements that I'm introducing and I would like other things to back off as a result. So let's take a listen to that. So the same thing goes for MIDI. If you're not ready to bounce to audio because you're still in process, go into the region inspector, you reduce the velocity settings of the region as a whole. Something else that you can mess with if you haven't already is check out working with dynamics in the context of MIDI regions. Really powerful. You can see that in this specific piano lead track, I've separated all of the regions so I know what chord goes to what part. So this is very helpful when you're really trying to create something emotional and, and just lush. And you can create that separation for you and for the listener. So let's close out here. Uh, go ahead and hit me with any comments. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on songwriting in general. And if you watched the video from yesterday, you can see that this is how I use the 2Bus Plus in terms of being efficient. So you can check back with that video. But anyway, let's close out. Thank you guys so much for the support. Much love, much respect. I'll catch you on the next one.